Today, I'll share with you a true story from Israel and Palestine. It's a courageous tale of a Palestinian widow's fight against an Israeli defense minister. The movie is called, Lemon Tree. This true incident had sparked widespread controversy in the international media at the time. Subsequently, this incident has been turned into a movie. While the incident itself was straightforward, the depth of the story was much greater. So, let's find out about a true incident between a Palestinian and an Israeli, which inspired the movie. Maybe today's video will be a little long, but still I have a special request to watch the whole story. At the beginning of the movie, we see some lemons being sliced very nicely. And with those, a woman is making some very delicious pickles. This respectable Palestinian woman's name is Salma, she is the main character of our story. Today, her only daughter and her grandchildren are coming to see her, that's why all this arrangement. On the other side, we see an Israeli truck, the truck is going somewhere through the road next to the Palestinian border. The only source of income for Salma is this lemon orchard, and this lemon orchard she inherited from her ancestors, and the orchard is quite large. This is Abu Hassam, he has raised Salma like his own daughter since childhood. Suddenly, Salma notices that Israeli truck. The truck stops right next to Salma's lemon orchard. This place was essentially the border between Palestine and Israel. On the other side of the border, Salma and Abu Hassam suddenly notice strict security. They still can't understand what's really happening there. The truck was delivering new furniture. This woman's name is Mira. She is the wife of the Israeli defense minister. Basically, this house is now Mira's new address. They have changed their residence, and that's why there is such tight security. Afterwards, Salma was cleaning up everything in her house when Abu Hassam came and asked, When are they coming? Salma replied, They will be here in a moment. Meanwhile, the phone in Salma's house rang. Her daughter informed her over the phone, Mom, forgive me, your son-in-law suddenly fell ill. That's why we can't come today. We will come another day. Hearing her daughter's words, Salma feels very sad. But even then, she doesn't let her daughter understand anything. After hanging up the phone, Abu Hassam comforts Salma, saying that they will definitely come next week. Then Abu Hassam leaves from there. Salma was having breakfast absent-mindedly, her gaze fixed on a picture on the wall. It was her husband. He passed away 15 years ago. Salma is actually an extremely lonely person. She keeps herself busy with this lemon orchard all the time. Her only son lives abroad, and her daughter got married and lives in another city. The next morning, Salma was abruptly awakened by the sound of commotion and banging. She quickly rushes outside and walks through the lemon orchard. Salma is looking very anxious. Seeing her, it was apparent that she was very frightened. Salma notices many Israeli soldiers inside her lemon orchard. Feeling a bit scared, she observes that heavy security watch towers are being placed around her house. Meanwhile, we see the Israeli defense minister, he was getting ready for breakfast. Mira comes downstairs from the bedroom and they both sit down together to have breakfast. The defense minister says to Mira, your journalist friend writes very well. Mira asks, why, did she write something about you? The minister replies, no, but you needs to invite your friend to our new housewarming party. Then the minister leaves from there. On the flip side, Salma and Abu Hassam were working in the lemon orchard. They were uprooting some old lemon trees and keeping them pile up in one place. Meanwhile, we are shown an Israeli officer, he was talking to one of their agent who was a Palestinian. This agent knew the history of this lemon orchard. He reassured the officer that this lemon orchard was very old, and there is no fear of their security about this orchard. But still, the officer seemed displeased, he was thinking something about this orchard. Meanwhile, Salma and Abu Hassam were passing in front of them, upon seeing them, the Israeli officer feeling afraid and he aimed his gun at them. At that moment, the agent stopped the officer and tells him that they were the owners of this orchard. Salma kept her gaze on the officer, and Abu Hassam walked away from there. The scene changes, and there was heavy rain outside. An Israeli military vehicle arrives and stops right in front of Salma's house. A soldier stands there, and knocking the door of Salma's house, but there is no response from inside. Just then, Abu Hassam comes from the orchard. The soldier hands Abu Hassam a letter and tells him to give it to Salma. Later on, Salma attempts to dry the soaked letter on the stove and trying to read it. The scene shifts again, and Salma is now in a local market. She enters a local cafe where a lot of commotion is going on. But as everyone notices Salma, they all fall silent. Salma is here to meet one of her uncle. Her uncle asks, why have you come here? Salma hands him the letter and says, the Israeli soldiers gave it to me. The letter is written in Hebrew, but I don't understand Hebrew, so I have brought it to you. Salma's uncle then begins to read the letter. 
It's from the Israeli Defense Ministry, instructing Salma that all the trees in her lemon orchard need to be cut down very quickly. This orchard has been identified as a security threat to Israel, and this order must be implemented very quickly. In exchange for these lemon trees, they will give Salma a small amount of money. Upon hearing about the money, everyone present their bursts into a scornful laughter. Tears well up in Salma's eyes, upon hearing. Salma's uncle tells Salma, they've imprisoned us in a circle. Salma then wants to leave with the letter, when her uncle calls her from behind and says, don't make the mistake of taking that sinful money from the Israelis. Be steadfast in your faith and belief. Salma then returns home from there. She calls her son who lives abroad and tells him about the lemon orchard. Her son advises her not to create trouble. He says, they've subjected us to a lifetime of oppression. You do one thing, sell everything there and come to America. The following day, Salma is going to Israel. She has come to the civil court for assistance. A soldier takes the complaint letter from Salma and asks her to wait outside. Salma waits outside. After a while, her tired eyes catch sight of the soldier coming out of the office. He calls out to Salma and tells her, you've been told that you will be given some money, and that's the final decision. Without saying a word, Salma gets into a taxi and leaves for another city in Palestine, where her daughter and son-in-law live. Salma tells her daughter and son-in-law in detail about everything that happened. Salma's daughter asks her husband what they should do now. Her husband tells her, I know a lawyer, he's from Russia. He is a good man. He might be able to help your mother. He is currently staying at a refugee camp. The next morning, the refugee camp is shown. Salma arrives at the refugee camp and tries to find the lawyer according to the address. After a bit of searching, Salma finally finds the lawyer's chamber. This gentleman's name is Giyath. Giyath invites Salma to sit and offers her some food. Salma thanks him. Giyath then asks Salma to explain her problem in detail. Salma then hands the letter to Giyath. Giyath then reads the letter carefully, which was the Israeli order. Giyath then tells Salma, now I understand your problem, but they are offering you money. Salma then says, the lemon orchard is a memory of my ancestors. No money in the world can buy that orchard from me, especially not the Israelis. Giyath then tells her, look, this is a very difficult matter. You will have to fight against the Israeli army, think very carefully about it, then you let me know your decision. Then, Salma returns home. When she was sleeping, the sound of lemons falling from the trees in the lemon orchard woke her up. This sound was very familiar to her. She has been hearing this kind of sound since her childhood. She used to pluck lemons from the trees in the lemon orchard, sitting on her father's shoulders. There are thousands of memories surrounding this lemon orchard. But those memories are now on the verge of being erased. Few days later, one morning, Giyath came to Salma's house. Upon seeing Giyath here, Salma is somewhat surprised. Giyath informs Salma that her case has been filed in the military court. The hearing might take place within a few days. He hands over a file to Salma. He says, this is your file, you'll need it for the hearing. Meanwhile, Abu Hazem arrives from the garden. Salma quickly opens the window. This time, Salma introduces Giyath and Abu Hassam to each other. Abu Hassam says to Salma, if Giyath taking a look around the lemon garden, how will it be? Giyath agrees to see the lemon garden. Then they enter the garden. Giyath was looking around the orchard. Then they came in front of the defense minister's house. We spot Mira on the roof, she is observing the situation. The following day, the defense minister was planning about their house party with Mira. At that moment, minister tells his wife, we must cut down the lemon trees before the event. Mira asks, why should we cut down these trees? The orchard is so beautiful, and it's not causing any harm to us. The minister says, these trees are a threat to our security, and that's the final decision. Upon hearing this, Mira feels upset. In the next scene, Salma and Giyath are at the court. Today is the hearing of their case. An Israeli army officer is also present on behalf of the Israeli army. The hearing begins in court. The army officer says, in the last 20 years, more than 20,000 attacks have occurred. The militants use this type of gardens for attacks. They launch their attacks indiscriminately. We are very concerned about our security. Giyath says, this lemon garden is over 50 years old, and such incidents have never occurred here before, not even in the surrounding areas. The debate continues. The judge advises both to calm down and says, I have made my decision. Both of you sit down. Now the decision is announced. The army has made the final decision that the lemon garden will not remain there. All lemon trees will be cut down because it is considered a threat to the Israeli army. The amount of money offered to Salma initially will be increased. Salma couldn't understand the judge's language, so Giyath was translating for her. 
Salma's eyes turn blood red with anger. At that moment, Salma says to Giyav, I don't accept this decision of the court. Giyav is somewhat surprised and asks her, what are you saying? Are you sure of what you're saying? Salma says, I am sure of what I am saying. I don't care about anyone. I will not let anyone lay a hand on my lemon trees. Giyath says, but you are going against the Israeli army. Then Giyath stood up and says to judge, Salma is rejecting the court's decision. She will appeal to the Supreme Court for justice. In the next scene, Giyath is seen in the Supreme Court and he presents the case of the lemon garden. The defense minister comes to know about this, and he informs his wife Mira about it. Mira says, I am not surprised. If I were in that woman's place, I would have done the same thing. Hearing her words, the defense minister becomes angry, and he tells his wife, you are always in favor of the Palestinians. Mira protests, saying, I have been seeing this since childhood, how much oppression they are facing. In anger, minister says, we are only trying to protect ourselves from those militants. Mira asks, are those lemon trees also militants? Meanwhile, Salma sees some Israeli soldiers and some people in front of her house. They are putting up iron barriers all around. They are going to enclose the entire lemon garden with iron fencing. Salma and Abu Hassam were just looking at it, rendered speechless. On the flip side, a reporter approaches the defense minister. This reporter was Mira's friend. The reporter asks the minister, I have heard that your Palestinian neighbor filed a case against you in the Supreme Court. Upon hearing this, the minister is a bit stunned, and he tells the reporter, no matter what she does, we will cut down those lemon trees as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Salma's entire lemon garden has been surrounded by iron fence, and there is a large signboard that reads, no one is allowed to enter this garden. Salma and Abu Hassam will never be able to enter this lemon garden again. In anger and frustration, Salma climbs over the fence and enters the garden. Due to the lack of water, the trees in the garden are drying up, so she tries to water the withered trees. At that moment, the soldier in the watchtower repeatedly warns Salma not to enter, but Salma does not understand Hebrew. Then the soldier descends from the watchtower, and he tries to make Salma understood by stating his name and speaking very kindly to Salma. Salma then says, if I don't water these trees now, it will die. This lemon garden holds so many memories for me. In the meantime, a secret service officer arrives there, and he scolds the soldier severely because he had treated the Palestinians very well. Mira had been watching all this through the window. The secret service officer tells Salma, you are prohibited from entering here. If you ever enter here again, you will be arrested. Salma doesn't respond. Her gaze shifts to Mira's window, and Salma looking at Mira with a glance. Mira felt an unfamiliar shame, and she quickly pulled the window curtain. Afterwards, the scene shifts to Jerusalem, the capital of Palestine. Salma arrives there with Giyav in a car. They primarily want to meet with the president. Giyav has arranged everything. They wait at the president's office. A large picture of Yasser Arafat was on the wall there. Their friend comes and says, I'm very sorry. President is very busy today. He won't be able to give you any time today. Please forgive me. Disappointed, Giyad and Salma return to their office. Salma asks Jihad, do we have any hope of winning? Giyad tells Salma, we are relying only on God for everything we are doing against all odds. Salma tells him, your fees haven't been paid yet. Jihad replies, we can discuss this matter later. Salma then returns home and takes out all her wedding souvenirs from inside a pillow. When the case proceeds, maybe she will have to sell these. So, Salma adorns herself with the ornaments for the last time and gazes at her reflection in the mirror. The next morning, Giyath comes to Salma's house again. This time, he wants to talk to Abu Hassam because Abu Hassam will be their only witness. Giyath tells him, you have some responsibilities. Then, Abu Hassam says, I've been here for the last 50 years. I haven't gotten married yet. My only child is Salma. I'm telling you again, my only child is Salma. Now you can make me understand my responsibility. The next morning, Mira was sitting on the balcony of her house, observing the surroundings. Suddenly, she hears a sound coming from the thickets of the lemon orchard in front of her. She gets up and moves a little forward, and then her eyes fall on Salma. She was picking the lemons that were lying on the ground. Mira steps a little further ahead. Salma also notices Mira. Both of them are looking at each other with blank expressions. They seem to be communicating with each other through their eyes. In Mira's eyes, there is unspoken sympathy, while in Salma's eyes, there is unspoken anger. Salma then leaves from there. On the flip side, the defense minister was giving a speech for the media. In the midst of it, a journalist asked him, I've heard that a woman from your constituency has filed a case against you in the Supreme Court. Is the hearing of that case scheduled for tomorrow? 
The minister, with a hint of irritation in his tone, replied, This news has already reached America also. However, whatever it may be, I cannot compromise the security of my home for a few lemon trees. Saying this, the minister left from there. The next morning, Salma was getting ready. Today was the day of the hearing in the Supreme Court. Both Salma and Ziad stood in front of the Supreme Court. Ziad asked Salma, Are you sure about going to court? Think about it one last time. Salma replied, I have thought about it for the last time. I will definitely fight for my rights. Ziad said, Then let's go. The two of them walked towards the Supreme Court. Then the next scene begins in the courtroom. The hearing has started. Ziad has begun his statement, and Salma listens to the translation through the translator. Ziad tells the judge, This lemon orchard is not just a garden, this orchard is intertwined with many memories. My client has grown up with this garden since childhood. It was his father's garden. Despite all these years, this garden and the surrounding area have never posed a threat to Israel. But as soon as the Israeli defense minister built a house there, they began to perceive this garden as a threat. But this is a violation of international human rights. Then the lawyer on behalf of Israel also began to speak. He says, this garden is a security issue for us. According to the intelligence reports we receive, we act accordingly. This garden poses a constant threat to us. Therefore, these trees must be cut down. Then the sole witness, Abu Hassam, begins his testimony. He says, Salma and I have nurtured each of these trees in this garden for the past 40 years. These lemon trees are not just trees, they have life, they have feelings. If we don't give them love, they won't grow up. We have never used a tractor in the garden. Instead, we have worked hard with our hands to cultivate the soil. We have taken care of the garden. We have loved it. Our love is deeply connected with these trees. Upon hearing Abu Hassam's words, Salma's eyes welled up with tears. Then the opposition lawyer showed the judge some soil from the garden, along with the report of the soil test. He said, these plants are dying. These trees won't survive much longer. Then Jiyath explained that the reason is very simple. They have put up iron fence around the garden, and my client is not allowed to enter there. And due to lack of care, the plants are now in this condition. The hearing ended like that day and the next date was given. The scene shifts, and today was the party at the defense minister's residence. A grand arrangement was underway. Many guests were expected to arrive in the evening. Suddenly, a few guests already present their remark, with such a beautiful lemon garden in front of the house, aren't we going to have some lemonade? Then, a few soldiers hurried to the garden to fetch lemons. They were picking lemons from the trees when suddenly Salma was seen rushing there. It seemed like she was trying to prevent everyone from taking the lemons. Although she stumbled several times on the ground, she still refused to let anyone take a single lemon from the tree. Hearing the commotion, Mira and the other guests came forward. Mira stepping ahead with the intention to address Salma, said, We only wanted to have a few lemons. It was not appropriate for us. I apologize to you. Salma doesn't say anything, she picks up her veil from the ground, and puts it on her head. The evening party at the minister's residence had begun. Many guests had arrived, and everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. The minister stood on the stage, praising his wife Mira, and everyone was listening intently to him. However, suddenly, the sound of an explosion was heard in the distance, indicating that someone had carried out a suicide attack. All the attendees at the event became very alarmed. Israeli soldiers immediately rushed to Salma's house. Salma was asleep at that time. The soldiers thoroughly searched the entire house. They asked Salma where the attacker was hiding, but she was too frightened to say anything. After searching for a long time, the soldiers concluded that there was nothing in the house. They then left Salma's house. The next morning comes and we can see that the Israeli soldiers searched Salma's house last night and messed up the entire house. Everything in the house was scattered and in disarray. Salma had been asleep on the sofa last night. At that moment, the female reporter came at Salma's house. She gently called out to Salma, and Salma woke up in fear from her sleep. The woman was Mira's journalist friend. She introduced herself to Salma. Salma asked her to sit down and apologized for the chaotic condition of the house. She told the journalist that Israeli soldiers had raided her house the last night. The reporter said, I understand, being the neighbor of a defense minister is not an easy situation for you. Salma said, yes. Ever since they came here, my life has become a living hell. They want to destroy my lemon orchard and the minister himself has stolen lemons from my orchard. At that moment, the journalist chuckled slightly and said, Really? Salma continued, They had sent few soldiers to take some lemons from my garden for their house party. They didn't even think they needed my permission for it. But the defense minister's wife apologized to me. 
The reporter then said, her name is Mira. I've known her since childhood. She's a good person. The scene shifts, and the defense minister was now showing the journalists why the lemon trees needed to be cut down. The journalists wanted to know Mira's opinion this time. Mira told them, I couldn't be a good neighbor. I couldn't establish the same friendship with her as I did with other neighbors. Then the scene shifts, and Mira's friend had come to meet her. They were talking. Mira feels very sorry. She thinks that the woman is being treated very unjustly. Mira tells her friend, I also wish I have a good relationship with my neighbor. But because of this dirty politics, we couldn't do it. My mother once said that Israel needs to sort out his problems with his father, before he becomes one himself. My mom wasn't much of a psychologist, but perhaps she was right. The next day, it is seen in Israel's largest daily newspaper that Mira's statement, along with the story of the lemon orchard, has been featured in a major article. The journalist titled it, Lemon War, Does Minister Navon Fear Salma Zidane? In this news, statement of Mira conveyed empathy for that Palestinian woman. Seeing this news, the minister becomes upset. He didn't understand what to do. He keeps trying to call Mira, but she wasn't picking up the phone. He sends her a voice message. Then, some more people come to meet with the minister. At that time, the minister tells them, Mira didn't give that statement. She has informed me about it in written. Meanwhile, Giath is shown. He has come to Salma's house. Giath enters the house very slowly. He had a newspaper in his hand. As soon as he sees Salma, he says, we have a very good news for us. Our work has been made much easier by defense minister's wife Mira. She has spoken on our behalf. And his statement has been published in various newspapers including BBC and Al Jazeera. Now everyone knows about this lemon orchard issue. Upon hearing about the news, Salma feels a glimmer of hope in her heart. That evening, the defense minister was giving an interview on TV. There, he was also asked about the lemon orchard issue. The minister said, this is a very humorous matter. Why do people have so many headaches with lemon gardens? Additionally, the lemon grove is owned by a Philistine woman. That night, when he returned home, the minister said to his wife, I understand that your friend did this. Perhaps you didn't phrase it this way. Mira remained silent for a moment and then says, What has been written in the newspapers, I have said exactly those words. Hearing Mira's words, the minister is somewhat taken aback. The next day, the minister's secretary called Mira and said, Your husband is very worried. The prime minister is calling him repeatedly. We are all in trouble because of that statement of yours. Please sign that paper. Otherwise, your husband may lose his job. On the other hand, Mira is shown. She is sitting silently beside the window. After taking a long deep breath, she signs the paper. On the other side, various media and human rights activists have gathered in front of Salma's house. They assure Salma of their full support and pledge to do whatever possible from their side to help her. The issue of this small lemon garden has now turned into a national issue. Both sides are holding back-to-back -back press conferences. Moreover, this incident has sparked widespread debate in the global media at that time. In the foreign country where Salma's son works, even their television channels were showing his mother. Salma's son is very surprised to see her. He cries out, saying, she is my mom. The people around then appreciate him, saying, your mom is a courageous woman. The scene changes, and Mira is shown, she is looking at the lemon orchard through the window. She notices that the guard at the watchtower has fallen asleep. When she goes to the drawing room, she sees that her personal guard is also asleep. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Mira quietly steps out of the house and enters the orchard, and heading towards the front. At one point, Mira reaches the front of Salma's house. Peering through the window, she sees Salma. This Palestinian woman, weary from the struggle, looked exhausted and frustrated. She was crying out of despair and anger. When Mira goes to knock on the door, someone restrains her from behind. Her personal guard has arrived there. He wouldn't allow Mira to enter the house. Mira insists, I'll just speak for two minutes and leave. However, the guard tells her she has no permission to enter, and he cannot allow it under any circumstances. Mira couldn't persuade him in any way. Then she quietly returned home from there. In the meantime, Salma could sense that someone must be outside her house, but when she opens the door, she doesn't see anyone there. When Mira returns home, all the windows of her house are immediately shut. Mira leads a very lonely life. Whenever she gets the chance, she gazes out the window at the lemon trees. Perhaps she won't be able to see these trees anymore after a few days. Her eyes welled up with a tear of guilt. When Mira shares her feelings with her daughter, her daughter says, Have you gone mad? Why are you so obsessed with them? Mira actually can't make anyone understand that injustice is being done to the Palestinians. 
The following morning, Jiyath arrives at Salma's house early. Today was the day for the much-awaited court hearing. Jiyath waits at the door, knocking softly. After a while, Salma opens the door, but she's still not ready. Jiyath asks her, why aren't you ready yet, are you feeling scared? Salma responds, maybe I'm a bit afraid, and you? Jiyath replies, maybe just a little bit, but for the sake of truth, we must fight. Then Salma begins to get ready, and Jiyath waits patiently. Afterwards, the two of them set out to leave for Israel. However, on the way, Israeli soldiers stop their car. The army informs Jiyath that there's a curfew today, and no vehicle will be allowed to enter Israel. Jiyath insists that he has permission papers, but the soldier insists that even with permission papers, they won't be allowed to enter Israel today. At that moment, a car belonging to Israeli agents arrives beside them. The agent asks Salma what's happening, and Salma explains that they need to go to the court. The agent informs them that due to the curfew, they won't be able to go anywhere today. Salma looks into the agent's eyes and says, I must get to court. In the next scene, Jiyath and Salma are seen, they are descending the stairs of the Israeli Supreme Court. As soon as they are spotted, the media surrounds them, bombarding them with various questions. Jiyath addresses them, saying, if we win today, all the people of Palestine will win, justice and human rights will win, and if we lose, human rights will lose. We are very hopeful about today's verdict. Just behind them, we spot Mira. Only her personal bodyguard accompanies her because she also needs to testify today. When Mira enters the hall, the entire media focuses on her. Salma also arrives there. Once again, these two women come face to face. They are looking at each other, and they both smile at each other. Afterward, the proceedings of the case begin. The court announces its decision, stating that since the issue involves both Israeli security and human rights, they have decided to cut down 50% of the lemon trees in question and reduce the height of the remaining trees. This means the remaining trees won't be cut. Upon hearing this verdict, Salma stands up and addresses the judge, saying, Your proposal dishonors me, my late father, and my late husband. My trees are real, my life is real. You're already building a wall around us, isn't that enough? The judge informs her that this is the final decision and it is non-negotiable. Hearing this, Salma remains silent, standing there quietly. Outside the courtroom, many media including Mira were standing to hear the verdict. The representatives for Israel came out from the courtroom, chuckling amongst themselves. Then Jiyath and Salma came out. However, Salma doesn't linger there. Jiyath addresses the media, saying, Ladies and gentlemen, it seems only American movies have a happy ending. It's not the decision we hoped for, but we definitely have a precedent. Instead of uprooting all the trees, they will now prune 50% of them. And this is the Palestinian people's triumph over the Israeli system and establishment. The decision isn't entirely in our favor, but for the first time in Israeli history, the Supreme Court decided not to uproot all the trees but to prune half of them. This is just the beginning of the struggle, and the first step toward victory. Mira keeps watching Salma from a distance, and Salma also looks at Mira with angry eyes. Mira understands everything from the language of Salma's eyes. Then these two women went out through the two doors of the court, and, they never met again. Upon returning home, Salma sets ablaze everything involved in this case. Abu Hassam comes and tells her, don't be disappointed, one day everything will be accounted for. And, they both of them stand by the raging fire. Meanwhile, Mira is shown. She is leaving this house forever, she doesn't want to spend another moment in this house. Mira gets into her car and drives away. The defense minister was alone in the house. The security bars of his windows are being removed. Now, he no longer sees the green lemon orchard in front of his eyes, instead, there is a huge concrete wall. The minister walks slowly towards the wall. At one point, he stops there, and with a gloomy gaze, he is staring at the wall. And the scene on the other side of the wall was exactly like this. The trees had been cut down. The trees that Salma and Abu Hassam had nurtured like their own children, now the remains of those trees lay before their eyes. The once beautiful green lemon orchard had now transformed into an empty park. Just like the innocent children of Palestine, they had also destroyed these helpless trees. Salma stands before this concrete wall, staring at it. She takes a long sigh. Then, she takes steps towards her home. And the movie concludes right here. The Palestinians may not find justice in any court of this world, but beyond the courts of this world, there is still the ultimate court. In that court, they will surely prevail. But on that day, in that court, will we receive forgiveness? So friends, that's it for today. 
Please comment on your thoughts about this story, which is based on a true incident. If I unintentionally cause anyone any discomfort through this video, I sincerely apologize and ask for forgiveness. Best wishes to everyone, take care. Goodbye for today.